today, we're gonna break the number one rule in all of astronomy, which is never, ever, ever point your telescope at the sun. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are out here outside in the daytime doing astrophotography and we're doing something super exciting. We're getting the solar telescope out and we're gonna take some photos of the sun. I'm gonna show you how you can do your own photos of the sun, what I use to take images of the sun. We're gonna talk about everything solar photography. So without further ado, let me show you my solar setup and what I use to actually look at images of the sun because this is the most important thing if you are interested in preserving your eyeballs or your camera. So before we get into the rest of this video, I wanna warn you, never look at the sun with your eyes unaided without proper filtration or else you risk permanent serious eye damage or you will break your camera. Your eyes are a bit more important than your camera, but I would like to save both your eyes and your money. So don't look at the sun unless you have the proper equipment and here is what you're gonna need if you want proper equipment. So what I use here is a large refractor, but the most critical part of any solar setup and what you're gonna need is a proper filter. Here I've got a Daystar cork chrominance filter. Now this is what I use to look at the sun without destroying my camera or my eyeballs. Without this, you would cause serious damage to anything you put on the business end of the telescope because when you collect all this sunlight with a big old lens like this one, uh, whatever happens on the bottom side is not gonna be very pretty. So you can use an expensive filter like this one, or you can get a simple cheap Mylar film white light solar filter, which you can put over the front of your telescope or a cheap glass white light solar filter. And that will let you look at plenty of interesting things on the sun, like sunspots and granules, all kinds of details. But if you want to see prominences or filaments, then one of these filters does become necessary. But there's still a lot you can do with something like a, a simple white light solar filter. Apart from this, what I've got here is my Explorer Scientific AR-127. That's gonna let us get nice and close to the sun. I've got my ASI-174MM here on the back. And this is gonna be what I use to actually shoot my photos is the 174. And I have a tip tilt adapter here to get rid of my, my Newton ring problem, which is pretty bad. Uh, it's like an artifact that comes up when uh, you use narrowband filters on the sun and you kind of need that to get rid of them. On top of all this, I have of course the the HEM27 because I have to carry my stuff up and down stairs right now. And it just keeps my whole setup nice and portable and I've got a Celestron battery to run it all. So that is the whole setup. Now let's get this thing pointed at the sun and start shooting some photos. So getting your telescope pointed at the sun is actually incredibly simple. All you have to do is look at the shadow of your telescope on the ground. The projection of your telescope should make approximately a circle on the ground. So you just have to move your telescope around until the shadow of it gets as small as possible and close to a circle. And this way you can find the sun super easy without straining or hurting your eyes by looking directly at the sun. So I kind of talked about this earlier and that there are two main ways you can look at the sun. You can look at it in white light, which is basically the whole spectrum. You just cut out most of the light so you don't destroy your eyeballs or your camera or you can look at it in narrow band. And in this case, I'm doing so with a hydrogen alpha filter. Now you can see more details and interesting things with the hydrogen alpha filter. And that's the only reason that I use it. The interesting thing about this particular filter is it actually has to warm up before I can use it. Uh, these filters are very specific about the wavelengths they let in and they have to be the right temperature in order to work. So right now I'm just waiting for this to warm up so that we can start getting some good shots on the filter of interest, which uh, is kind of an interesting thought with the filter. It's gotta get hot. Of course, pointing it at the sun is definitely going to help get it hot as well. But, and what this gains you once you use a special hydrogen alpha filter is you can see prominences, filaments, all these kinds of insane filamentary structures that occur on the sun. Now these aren't exactly on the surface of the sun, they're kind of below the surface. And what this filter does is let you look at a, a little layer of the sun's atmosphere basically, where a lot of interesting details are happening. And that's what we're gonna try and do today. There's a big old sunspot right now that should provide some pretty interesting structures and cool views. So we're going to uh, point the telescope off to that sunspot and see what we can capture. So here is the live footage straight from my camera looking right at the sun. Here you can see this massive sunspot right next to the limb of the sun and the limb is just another term we call for the edge. Close to the bottom left, you can see a pretty faint prominence, a not very interesting looking one, but 
The sunspot itself was, is quite interesting and very large. You may be wondering, this is in black and white, why is it in black and white? And the reason is my camera is a black and white camera and this gives me the most detail and the highest frame rate possible to get the most detail. When you're shooting the sun, the sun actually is the color white. And to go even further, if you're shooting a narrow band, it's only useful to shoot with black and white cameras. When you see a HA image of the sun in color, it means we have to give the image a false color so that it's more appealing to the viewer. And we'll go ahead and turn that on now. So now this is in color. It looks a bit more like what you would be used to. Is it scientifically accurate? Not really, but most people don't know the difference anyways, and it looks a lot better. All right, so we've got our proper filter. We've got our proper telescope. We can safely look at the sun. The thing is the the photographing process for the sun works a little bit differently than how you may be used to taking a photo yourself. And the way we actually do that is by a thing called lucky imaging or speckle imaging in astrophotography. So basically the atmosphere is all jiggly wobbly, right? There's moments where it's really disgusting looking and then there's moments where there's supreme clarity in the atmosphere. And what we're interested in is getting as many of those clear moments as we can as possible. And the way we do that is by shooting thousands of photos in a short burst. And then we later use software to analyze all of those thousands of images we took, and then we align them and we stack them to create one final image, which is free of noise and is composed entirely of those sharpest little bits we captured in our short burst. Now that's all nice and well in theory, but <laughs> when you're facing up against reality, more often than not, you'll find that when the seeing is bad, there are no moments of clarity, it's just bad. And then when the seeing is good, it's just good. And there's very few moments where it's bad. So. You'll see mostly the, the speckle imaging explanation is that, oh, most of the time we're looking for brief moments of clarity. But in reality, that's not really how it plays out. It's either clear or it's not clear. And you just kind of have to wait until it looks good. And then you shoot as many frames as possible to get less noise in your final photo. But that's what we're doing now is we're waiting for those clear moments. And then we're snapping our photos to try and show you the details. So I went ahead with the process and stacked my raw data. I kept 20% of the frames over the capture of 5,000 frames. So I tried to get some of the better moments. And I went through just a brief editing process, which I'll time lapse through here. But I hope you enjoyed watching the video and learned a little bit about shooting the sun.